Welcome to Spartan Sports Beat. I'm Steve Balson bringing you the latest in the world of St. Thomas Aquinas College Athletics. In this edition, we'll take a look at some of the familiar faces who work behind the scenes to serve the stack community. Our first guest today is Brad Sarno, who in addition to being the voice of the Spartans, is also the director of club and intramural sports. Brad, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Steve. You've had a long history here at St. Thomas Aquinas. Why don't you talk a little bit about you, how you started here and sure. how you got to where you are now? Sure. Uh, I came here in 2001 right out of high school. Started working in the athletic department in, my, uh, in the summer before my freshman year. Uh, was able to get a job here on campus during the summer, thanks to Mr. Oswald and, and Ms. Bano uh, and our athletic staff. And uh, as a result, um, it grew from there. Uh, I was uh, started to do the public address uh, announcing part of it uh, in my freshman year, a little bit of soccer here and there, a little bit of basketball, baseball and softball, and it grew. Um, and now 12 years later, I'm still doing PA and uh, it's the voice of the Spartans as people call me. So it's, uh, it's great, it's awesome. And I've, over the, the 12 years that I've been here now, it's just been tre tremendous. And I, you know, I enjoy every moment of it. Anyone who's been around Aquinas Hall or around St. Thomas Aquinas Athletics, uh, I think knows you or at the very least has seen you around. Uh, talk a little bit about that role as the voice of the Spartans. What does that mean to you and what do you get out of it? You know, it's, it's an enjoyable role and um, our athletes like it, whether, you know, past or present or future. I mean, our, uh, our recruits that come in wa and watch games, you know, they, they enjoy it and they remark and they say how great, you know, my voice is and how much I pump up the crowd and, you know, how much the, the crowd and the athletes are into, you know, what comes uh, through the microphone. Is it something where uh, maybe you're walking across campus and you're, you'll hear a callback on one of your trademark phrases or anything absolutely, like that? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I can go back a few years to men's basketball as I was crossing the street from one se section of campus to the other. You know, from a distance, I heard my three-point call come out, of, uh, come out of the mouth of a, of a men's basketball player. And uh, then several basketball players after that started to chime in, and it was... It's actually refreshing to hear it from somebody else other than myself, to know that it's popular. Well, you spend a lot of time around varsity athletics, mm -hmm. and clearly that's the lion's share of, uh, you know, what people think of when they think of an athletic department program. But you also have a lot of other responsibilities here. Why don't we touch on some of those a little bit? Sure. Um, I am in charge of our club and intramural sports programs here on campus. Our club and intramurals were a part of our student activities. And about three years ago, I was uh, given the task of rebuilding and uh, adding to our programs and ever since then that's what I've been doing and our both our intramural and club sports programs have expanded drastically since then and um, I'll touch a, a bit about our club sports first we have uh, seven club sports right now we have uh, bowling we have cheerleading uh, dance team we have ice hockey men's and women's soccer and volleyball so we have seven uh, terrific sports here on campus. They're, you know, we don't have them for the most part on the varsity level except the men's and women's soccer, but uh, they're a big part of what we do around here on campus. And, uh, you know, I can go into each one. Uh, for instance, I'll, I'll hit a couple of highlights. Bowling uh, was a sport that on campus was just recreational. When it came to the club sports program, we built it up and made it competitive. We go to schools uh, and face places like Nassau Community College. Uh, we're going up to Schenectady this year to, to take part in a match. Um, Hofstra, uh, you name it, schools from the area that are, are big and small, we compete against. And uh, we've been successful because our program is growing year after year. And it's not just the kid who casually bowls every weekend with his friends. It's more of uh, kids who have participated in bowling on the high school level that we're recruiting now as part of our program. So bowling is one of those sports that's growing by leaps and bounds every year. Our cheerleading dance teams, and as you know, being our, uh, our voice uh, on radio calling basketball, they're what gets our crowd going besides our teams. You know, they're our spirit teams. They're out there cheering and dancing on the floor during halftime, you know, trying to root our teams on to victory every chance they get. Our ice hockey team, we have a team that is probably one of the fastest, uh, most talented squads that I've seen in years. 
And you know, I've been with the college now 12 years, but I've seen our hockey team um, in years past, and this is the fastest, most talented team we've had. And I really enjoy watching them because I am a hockey guy. I, I like hockey. I'm a fan of it. So it's really great to be around the rink and be around the guys as, as they take part in practices and competition. Our uh, men's and women's soccer teams are pretty much feeders to our varsity programs. You know, we send our players down, excess players on the roster, injured players. You know, they may lose a year of eligibility, but they get a lot more out of it. They're able to be successful, to work on their skills, and then be elevated back to the varsity team. We had a couple of women's soccer uh, players who played on the club team, and this past year they got elevated to the varsity team. So we were very proud of the steps they took to get themselves better to go up to that next level. And our newest team is volleyball. We have volleyball here on campus, it is co-ed. We are growing this program. Uh, last year we started out with about eight or nine kids. The, now we're up to 20, we're up to 20 kids and we're trying to get that expanded even more. So we look at volleyball as our newest sport and we, we're proud of what we do with it. And it's a sport where, you know, we, we're in a co-ed mode right now, but if we can add more to the roster, we're gonna have separate men's teams and women's teams. Uh, intramurals. Intramural sports are our recreational programs. What we try to do is get our kids out of the classroom, you know, out of the dorms, get them to, to take part in activities on a nightly basis. Right now we go four nights a week. Uh, we go Sunday through Thursday and we mix up the sports. We have all kinds of different sports, all kinds of different events, uh, whether it's wiffle ball or handball or an open gym where the kids can go and just shoot hoops or uh, you know, we play outdoor soccer, we play uh, flag football, we play a bunch of sports and we change them by, based on appeal and also by season too. So we try to mix and match all year long to keep our kids uh, happy and interested, you know, besides doing just uh, the study work. So we'll break that down a little bit. Mm -hmm. We go back to the club level, right. and I think uh, maybe in this day and age, most uh, athletic programs don't have what would used to be called a junior varsity or anything sure. of that sort. However, you know, the club level is not to be taken lightly. It is intercollegiate, and these athletes are also team-based, and they're working very hard representing the college, aren't they? Absolutely. Um, you know, the differences between the NCAA varsity and the club, you know, there are no scholarships. Some of our teams do play, uh, pay player fees uh, to participate, but it's relatively the same. We practice on a regular basis. We play other schools on a regular basis in competition. You know, we, have, we hold the same standard... Uh, of academics, you know, we require them to have a 2.0 GPA to participate. You know, they go through all of the medical testing and, and things like that, um, albeit they do it with their personal physician, but we go through everything that a normal varsity team goes through to prepare them for their competition throughout a season. And when you spend as much time as you do in charge of, you know, a lot of these club sports, and I'm sure you know all the athletes involved, there is a pathway for some of them, as you mentioned, uh, to the varsity level where the sports exist, uh, for example, is in soccer. Is, is that a, a particular source of satisfaction for you, seeing one of those players break through? Absolutely, and I, I uh, take it back to like minor league baseball or minor league hockey where, you know, that student athlete is working his way up the ladder, uh, getting better at his skill level, and then, you know, our varsity coaches will come in and take a look and say, hey, you know, this, this young man or this young lady is ready to go. Their skill level is top notch and we're, we're ready to have them on our varsity team. And we are glad to elevate them because we know we're going to get other club athletes to try and prepare them to move ahead as well. And then of course, when you look at intramurals, it is, it is such an important facet of college life because maybe someone doesn't have the athletic skill or ability as right. a scholarship level athlete stack being a division two program it's a pretty high level of competition and also having a variety of sports and things that maybe a student can do between uh, you know between classes or as the time permits without having to have the burden of a varsity schedule uh, that reaches a large part of the conference uh, the the uh, college community doesn't it? oh sure uh, our students you know we, we try to make them well-rounded as they enter and exit the college, you know, after four or five years, however long they're here. And one of the things we say to them in their freshman orientation is, you know, it's not all about academics. We want you to be well-rounded. We want you to take part in social activities, you know, athletic activities, you know, uh, recreational activities. And we're trying to, you know, get them to be 
you know, responsible adults and take part in things outside of the classroom so that they can, you know, meet friends, you know, uh, meet that potential boyfriend or girlfriend, husband or wife, you know. So we try to get them in that social atmosphere and, you know, what better way than a little competition between the classes or your classmates. And at a time in this day and age where many institutions are looking for areas maybe where they want to cut back a little bit, and unfortunately very often athletics and related activities are on the table, how important is it to have the support of your administration to build your program? Oh, it's tremendously important. And uh, with the support of uh, Jerry Oswald, their athletic director, the athletic staff in the department, um, Dr. Kirk Manning, who's our vice president, and Dr. Margaret Fitzpatrick, our president here at the college, they have been the ones who have come to me with the task of building up our programs, you know, and I, I can't thank them enough for giving me the opportunity to do so. And uh, every day that I, I step foot into the doors of St. Thomas Aquinas College, I'm looking to make our programs bigger and better and draw in more students with all of our activities and, and teams that we have. Well, over the course specifically of the uh, past few years, Brad, I'm pretty sure that uh, work that you've put in speaks for itself in the success of the programs and the building of those programs going forward. We'd like to thank you for joining us today and wish you the best of luck. I appreciate that. Thank you, Steve. Brad Sarno from the St. Thomas Aquinas College Athletic Department, Director of Club Sports and Intramurals. Be sure to stick with us as we welcome a guest who was a stalwart as both a player and a coach for the Spartans baseball program, but is also a fixture around Aquinas Hall. We'll talk with John Garvey when, we're, when we come back. And once again, we'd like to welcome you back to Spartan Sports Beat. At this time, we're going to turn our attention to stack alum and current assistant baseball coach and fitness center coordinator, John Garvey. John, thanks for joining hey, us thanks, today. Thanks for having me. Now, Garvey, you also have come up through the stack program. Why don't you talk a little bit about your career as an undergraduate, as a student, as well as as, a, as an athlete? Well, uh, I came here from out of high school, uh, and uh, I was an infielder. Coach Muscad recruited me to come here. and. Uh, my first year, he told me that he wanted me to become a catcher, and um, five years later, I learned how to catch. So uh, um, going through, it was kind of a rough start at the beginning, but once I got the hang of it, I really got a down pat and really had a good control of the game from that aspect on. So uh, um, then, you know, it just took off from there. Basically, just really took off, and um, I really got to learn a lot about the game, and then Right out of college, Coach Muscat said, hey, I want you to come back and uh, coach the team. So I started coaching right then and there. You and the team also enjoyed uh, some success while you were here as an undergraduate as well, I'm sure. Yeah, we uh, won the East Coast Conference Championship in 2008. Uh, I was part of the team that year, and uh, it was a great feeling to win that as a regular season champs that year, um, taking on some of the big teams that we had, and uh, even taking on uh, Franklin Pierce. We beat Franklin Pierce that year, and they were 25th in the nation at the time. Now as an assistant coach, you've able, been able to transition that same success going forward. The team finished first in the ECC in the regular season this year. Uh, is that an extra level of satisfaction for you, having seen that, that progression through your own playing career and your oh, coaching of tenure? Of course. It's, it's great to uh, be a part of it as a player and then as a coach. And uh, to basically build that model up, you know, knowing that we did, I did it in 2008 and come back and say, let's go back and do 2012, uh, it was great to give that information to the players and, you know, see them have that success and do well. Um, it was really great for me to have that. Um, I enjoyed all of last year and the success that we had. It was a great ride and wish we could have went a little bit further, but uh, it was a great ride that year. Well, and also in terms of building it up, you have no small role now in setting the foundation of this team as the recruiting coordinator. Why don't you discuss that a little bit? Yeah, that, that's a really big part of the program uh, turnaround this, in the last couple of years. Uh, Coach Muscat, um, after my first year here, gave me the reins of the recruiting coordinator. And we have a big, big uh, recruiting class that we keep bringing in each year. Um, we have a lot of students that we go out and see every year. And um, it's just a lot, of, a lot of time and effort that we put in over the summer and the fall semesters that we have to do to bring in a good class the next year with the uh, emails, workouts, showcases, and so forth, and a lot of traveling all throughout the year. So. Um, each year, we, we, our plan is to bring in better players than we had the year before uh, and bring in guys that we, that we will replace for the guys that we're going to miss. Um, big one, one last year, just bringing in Mike Russo for one year um, and 
just automatically gave us a big bump that year. And uh, he was an All-American out of a junior college. And that's probably one of the greatest things I got as a recruiting coordinator, bringing in an All-American and his immediate success for the season and winning the Triple Crown and being third-team All-American. It was great. And as a recruiting coordinator, of course, you have to be aware of every tool that you can have in your arsenal to get a student to decide to come to St. Thomas Aquinas College. For starters, you have to be thrilled to have the ability to have a, a professional ballpark as the Spartans' home field. Yeah, a lot of the kids that come here, they, they love the park. They come here. That's the first thing we take them to now. And they, they just, there's their jaws drop when they walk in knowing that that's our home park and they get to play all their, all their games there. And, uh, they don't really even want to see the rest of the campus after that. They just want to go and say, where do I sign when they walk into the park? So um, it's been a great deal with that, having the park. Um, and it caused for a lot of success for us last year, just having that park. And the guys really love it. Got to know how much uh, money is in the bank for us when we're doing guy, signing guys. And, uh, but also knowing how much the school costs and what works for the kid and what works for us and knowing what we need and what they need. And, you know, getting to know the kid probably right before they come here is a big, big part of what we do and making sure that we bring the right kid in for the program. And to follow that point, uh, where we were discussing Provident Bank Park, the minor league home of the Rockland Boulders, a local professional ball team, as a recruiter, even if the athlete doesn't want to look past the stadium, you have to be able to show uh, the student and the parents as well what St. Thomas Aquinas has to offer and what kind of things do you use in that regard? I mean, what do you, how do you convince a student that St. Thomas Aquinas is the place to be? Well, it's a little easier because I, I went here and I graduated from here and uh, I have a little bit more inside to that. Um, just most of it is about the small class size, um, good uh, relationship with professors that you can have with those classes, um, the dorms and the life on campus and so forth like that, and just the athletic programs that we have to offer. Um, we do a lot of stuff like that and a lot of the programs that we offer for the kids to come here is good for them and fit. Well, anyone who's been around St. Thomas Aquinas in recent years knows that there's been a commitment shown to upgrading, increasing, improving the facilities. We've seen the building of the new outdoor fields that are going to be unveiled in the spring. You also have a role in the indoor facilities uh, that help not only the athletes, but the student population as well. Why don't you talk about that a bit? Yeah, I'm in, last year, uh, Jerry Oswell hired me to become the coordinator of the fitness center, and uh, uh, we did a lot of a lot of progress, progression this year for the fitness center. We put in new treadmills in, new ellipticals, new weight systems for all the, all the programs in there, uh, as well as putting classes. We have P90X classes for the students. Um, we'll have uh, stuff for breast cancer and prostate cancer awareness. And we do a lot of stuff in the fitness center that allow to attract more students in there and uh, have a better facility for them to use, not only for just the athletes, but as well as for the general population of the students here. And of course, when you go beyond that as well, uh, you don't always get a chance to oversee it directly in your, your baseball tenure in the dugout, uh, but games at Aquinas Hall and all things Spartan related, the fancy stack duds that you're wearing <laughs> and uh, that, that so many of us sport around St. Thomas Aquinas, uh, you have a lot to do with that as well. Yeah, a lot of the merchandise uh, that we sell online uh, and give out to the players here. Uh, I'm in charge of ordering that and making sure that we get that here at St. Thomas. Um, baseball just put in a new deal with Nike this year and uh, we'll be getting a whole brand new Nike stuff and we'll have that online probably in the summer this year for uh, fans to get and you know we did some stuff with Under Armour and Adidas so the fans can you know sport some stack apparel as well as the students here as well so we, we did a big job on upgrading our clothing wear that we have. Well, we've gotten to see some of it up close and personal and guarantee <laughs> you this is some quality merchandise. Yeah. And if you're looking for it, check out stackathletics.com or uh, this gentleman here, John Garvey, is gonna be the one to take care of you and make sure you get everything you need. Definitely. John, thanks so much for stopping by thanks and good luck me. the rest of the year. No problem, thank John you. John Garvey, the assistant baseball coach of the St. Thomas Aquinas College men's baseball team joining us today on Spartan Sports Beat. We'll be back to wrap things up right after this. And back here on Spartan Sports Beat, we'd like to thank today's guests, the voice of the Spartans, Brad Sarno, and assistant baseball coach, John Garvey. And also remember, John Garvey's in charge of the great stack merchandise like this you see here. 
And you can find it online at www.stackathletics.com. Be sure to sport all the latest and greatest in stack apparel. We'd also like to thank you for watching and hope you'll join us again next time. Spartan Sports Beat is a production of the St. Thomas Aquinas College Department of Athletics and JHP Productions. Until next time, this is Steve Balson saying thanks again for watching and so long from Spark Hill.